Electric bikes have quite obviously come to the forefront of electric mobility in recent years, but many of the electric bikes on the market are aimed at city commuting and offer little to no off-road capability. If you want the ability to turn off the road and take a dirt side path on the way to your destination without having to worry about whether or not your bike will survive the ride, then a fat tire bike could be the answer. This is the Serp Max Electric Fat Tire Bicycle, and its simplicity and ease of use alone make it an enticing option. But does it have what it takes to be worth your money over the competition? We'll take a look next on Now Let's Review. The Serp Max arrived mostly assembled, only requiring the front wheel to be attached, which only took a few minutes. While this is usually an easy one-person job, this bike is heavy enough that it took two of us to get the tire on, just so the bike could be held up. The brakes out of the box were so far out of adjustment that they would barely stop the bike at all. So the first thing we did was adjust the brakes so they actually functioned. Since the front and rear brakes are typical cable actuated disc brakes, the adjustment was typical of brake adjustments on any regular bike. After inflating the tires to a proper level, we began riding. One of the first things that came to our attention was how tall the bike is. Even with the seat as low as it will go and the handlebars as low as they will go, you still end up reaching up to the handlebars a bit and you feel very high off the ground. This wasn't the end of the world and in no way made the bike unrideable. Rather, it was just a bit surprising and took a bit of getting used to. The quality of the bike revealed itself to us as we rode it. The frame is made from aluminum and feels sturdy enough to take a bit of a beating. The handlebar grips have a decent feel to them, and they don't seem like they will come apart and flake away like some bike handle grips do. The seat is far from the most comfortable and doesn't do much to cushion larger bumps, so standing up on the pedals will be a good habit to get into if there are a lot of bumps where you would ride. The tires and rims seem fine, and the shifter and 7-speed transmission are from Shimano, so it's nice to see at least one name brand part on the bike. The front suspension can handle bumps fairly well, but the rear suspension feels very stiff and doesn't seem to have much give to it. The front suspension is adjustable, but we haven't noticed a need to mess with that as the setup from the factory is perfectly fine for everyday riding. There are audible shakes and rattles when riding over uneven surfaces, which is never very comforting, but as far as we can tell, nothing has come out of place. The features of this bike are about what you would expect for a bike in this category. Powering the Serp Max is a 500 watt motor mounted on the back wheel, which draws from a 13.8 amp hour, 48 volt lithium ion battery that charges in two to four hours. This combination gives the Serp Max a claimed range of 35 to 45 kilometers using the motor only and 80 to 90 kilometers using pedal assist. After our test of riding a few hours through a combination of tough woods trails, dirt paths, and street riding using almost exclusively the throttle, the bike traveled what it said was 12.9 kilometers and had about 40% battery left. So the 35 kilometer range using the throttle only is definitely possible if done only on flat roads. We found ourselves using the thumb throttle to cruise using just the motor most of the time we were riding on the road because of the more than capable cruising power of the motor. For steeper inclines, the pedal assist allowed us to power up hills with ease. The pedal assist itself is a bit delayed in its engagement and disengagement. Once you start pedaling hard, it takes a few seconds for the pedal assist to kick in. And once you stop pedaling, it takes a few seconds for the pedal assist to stop, meaning that even if you're not using the throttle, the motor is still propelling the bike forward. Even so, the pedal assist isn't jerky or sudden and actually comes on fairly smoothly. The battery level is one of several things visible on the handlebar mounted LCD display in addition to the speed, pedal assist level, trip meter, odometer, and time, all of which can be cycled through using the dual function mode slash power button on the left handlebar unit. Next to the mode button and the pedal assist up and down buttons are a red button labeled on off and a yellow button labeled boost. These buttons are confusing because the red on off button turns on and off the very bright LED headlight and the boost button has nothing to do with an increase in speed. Rather, it controls the very loud and piercing horn. These buttons look eerily similar to the buttons on the Mantis scooter that we have previously reviewed. We're glad these companies are reusing some parts, but it can be confusing for new riders who haven't figured out what the buttons mean yet. The convenience of the Serp Max is certainly limited in some ways. The bike does fold in half, 
which is also how the battery can be accessed and removed. And the handlebars also fold down into the side. Even when folded completely, fitting this bike into any vehicle smaller than an SUV would definitely be a challenge. The dimensions of the bike when fully folded are 34.6 inches by 29.5 inches, which on paper seems compact, but getting the bike into the trunk of a sedan proved extremely difficult. The bike is also very heavy, weighing in at 23.5 kilograms or just under 52 pounds, so lifting it into and out of cars would be a hassle. The battery is removable, which does allow for it to be charged just about anywhere you can find an outlet. The long range offered from the battery also means you aren't likely to have to charge it too often if your commute is an average biking distance, so the convenience depends on your personal circumstances. The Serp Max bike is simple, which is a good thing. It doesn't have any overly complicated features, and it doesn't try to be super high-tech. Other than the initial confusion from the mislabeled buttons, the bike is pretty straightforward, which is something we like to see in products like this. If you're looking for a truly off-road worthy mountain bike, the Serp Max will likely fall short. It can handle dirt paths, grass, and sand, but on truly challenging trails with tough terrain, this bike will quickly meet its limits. There are noticeable similarities with the parts on this bike to those on other products we've reviewed in the past, which makes it seem like the Serp Max was in many ways a parts bin product. This doesn't necessarily mean the bike is bad, but if innovative and well thought out design is a must have in a product for you, you may wish to look elsewhere. For nearly $400 less than the Serp Max, you could get Electric XP, which is another folding fat tire electric bike we have tested in the past. The only major difference being the electric doesn't have rear suspension, but if you aren't going to be taking your bike off-road much, you should consider your options. Pretty much everything about the Serp Max bike is fine, and that's how this bike can best be described. It's fine. There's nothing about this bike that makes it stand out high above the rest, and there isn't anything about it that suggests you shouldn't buy it. Although at the asking price of $1,296 US dollars, you should remain open to other options. All in all, the Serp Max is a bike. It does what it's supposed to do, and it will get you where you need to go. Thank you for watching this review video of the Serp Max Fat Tire Electric Bike. If you like this video and you want to see others like it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.